Hello there, young students of brass instruments. This is Joseph Jackson, and Mr. Legaspi asked me to record a little video talking to you about brass instruments, and in particular, the tuba. So, uh, the tuba is my instrument. I've played for uh, it's 20 plus years, and uh, I'll share a few things with you about the instrument. Number one, when we look at the tuba, I'm just going to pick my tuba up. My horn is a six quarter size double C tuba. So that means the open note sounds like this. And I'll push the camera back a little bit so you can kind of understand more of the size of this instrument. Um, an instrument like this will weigh around oh, 30 or 40 pounds. You don't have to play anything this big. Uh, I chose this instrument because my teacher uh, back in the days, Tommy Johnson, said, Joseph, this is the instrument you should play. And I trusted his judgment uh, back then and I still trust it now. Um, Let's talk about the tuba for a minute. The tuba is the largest of the brass instruments and a lot of people look at the tuba and go, well it takes a lot of air. And yeah, that's true, it does take a lot of air, but understand you're not filling the instrument with air, you fill it with vibration that's going through the mouthpiece. So I should be able to pick up my mouthpiece and, and do things like buzzing. So. <laughs> One thing that's important about buzzing the mouthpiece is that uh, if you can buzz it, you can play it. So what happens is before we can do things on our instruments, we have to internalize things first. And that means it's in the mind and using the ears to understand and hear things uh, before we can ever play it on our instruments. Um, oh, there's a few things I should point out. Air. Air is explained like this. Air makes buzz, makes sound. You say it. Air makes buzz, makes sound. So it's the air that I'm blowing across or through my lips. And you may laugh at the tuba players. That's actually what happens in a low register when we play notes like this. Our lips are just kind of flapping around in the mouthpiece. Okay, back to airflow. So you need to understand this. Uh, in order to play any brass instrument, you have to have great use of your air. Uh, I like to do exercises, let me put my tuba down, uh, where I'm just inhaling and exhaling. And a good thing to do is, right now I'm looking at myself in the camera, but you as a student, you can look at yourself in the mirror. And you need to ask yourself questions. Am I, am I breathing? Some people will breathe like this, for instance, they go, Look how bad I look. When you breathe in, you don't need to raise your shoulders. Uh, some, some raising of your shoulders may happen naturally, but you shouldn't try to take a breath and go, this is actually creating a lot of tension and you can't get a good breath in. Uh, I'll, I'll do one thing here to show you uh, a good way of how to breathe. I'm going to take a piece of paper, for instance. This is a piece of music out of one of my books, which, uh, yeah, it's been heavily used. But you can do this. Put the paper out in front of you and just watch. And as I'm breathing in and blowing the air out, take a look at me. I'm not doing a lot of motion up here with my shoulders. I'm breathing and I want to breathe down from the very lowest part of my body. So the idea is that you're breathing very low and you take the air in and you blow it out. So air makes buzz, makes sound. And that's something you can do. Take a piece of paper and just put it out in front of you and see how well you're using your air. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the tuba. Uh, Mr. Legaspi and I have been friends for quite some time and we play very different instruments in the sense that aerial Oh, excuse me, Mr. Legaspi, don't call him that. He's Mr. Legaspi to you. But um, in the sense, the trumpet and the tuba are similar because we're brass instruments. We both use a mouthpiece, and we both use valves and slides to make changes in notes or pitches. But here's the thing. The tuba has a very special responsibility in the band. The tuba balances the band. So in other words, the tuba is like a foundational instrument. Uh, it's going to cover a lot of the lower notes and in the lower range. But the tuba has a very wide range, 
Uh, also, the tuba oftentimes is not giving melodies. It has accompanying parts. To accompany means you go along with or you're playing under somebody else or you're playing to support somebody else. For instance, tubas do a lot of things like this. All of those things are background uh, underneath somebody else playing. Whereas Mr. Gatsby, who plays the trumpet, may end up playing things like melodies more of the time. So like this. A familiar melody, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. But the tuba has quite a bit of range. I can play down here real low, or I can play up high. So the tuba has a lot of flexibility, but our main job most of the time is to support other instruments. And so, if for those of you that are thinking about the tuba, uh, I would encourage you to ask Mr. Lee, ask me questions about it. Uh, he, I'm gonna, he has my information. You can uh, email me or text message me questions about the tuba or about this video. But I want to encourage you to pick an instrument that you love. If you love the sound of the tuba, play the tuba. If you love the sound of the trumpet, play the trumpet. If you love the sound of the xylophone, then learn percussion. It's all up to you what you want to do. But here's the most important thing. Pick an instrument that you really love the way it sounds. Um, I picked the tuba. Well, to be honest, I used to think the tuba was easy to play. Wrong, wrong, wrong. No instrument is easy to play. They only get easier as you practice them. So I want to encourage you to practice. But pick, first, pick an instrument that you love based on what it sounds like. When I hear the tuba and I play things like this, I really love that kind of sound. And so that's one of the reasons I play the tuba. But fall in love with the sound you like, pick that instrument, practice and work hard, and you can play as good as me, you can play as good as Mr. Legaspi. If you work hard enough, you can play better than us. But the main thing is pick an instrument you love, pick a sound you love, understand what your instrument can do, and you can play anything you want on any instrument if you work hard at it. Okay, I can play bass lines. I can do bass lines. I can play classical music. That <laughs> sound familiar? I can do all kinds of things. I can play beautiful melodies. taking up enough of your time. It's been a lot of fun to record this little video for you. Uh, I hope this will be helpful and uh, I wish you the best in playing music. There is no greater joy in my life, I think, <laughs> than playing music for other people. And uh, I find music is, is involved in almost every aspect of life, if not every aspect of life. Music is a part of it. I encourage you to practice hard. If you have any questions, ask Mr. Legaspi or send me a text or an email. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.